my friends stand by me only if I'm right. I come out of triple darkness just to see the light. If I say it once, I guarantee I say it twice. If they know me, I ain't going out without a fight. In my dreams, I'm a killer, but for God, man. Try to play it cool, but it's getting hard, man. Rolling with the real and death to all the flaws, man. Not too many on me, yeah, it's kinda hard, man. In my room, sitting in my room. Know they waiting on me, and I'm coming soon. Never been a sellout, never been a coon. Y'all be on the camera acting. I'ma show them how I true and independent get it. Whole game changed by the time I'm finished with it. We about to get this business handled in a minute. Welcome to the B2M Crew Podcast, where five lifelong friends for over 40 years um, are coming to you talking about parenting our 12, 13 children, including 12 sons. And how we reared them and just sharing with you and letting you into our lives. We're broadcasting from the Cole Building in downtown Charlottesville, Virginia. A wonderful uh, co-working space, office space, special meeting and event space down here in the downtown mall. So definitely come out and check out the Cole Building, one of our sponsors. I'm joined to my right by John J.G. Yates. What up, though? Uh, In the middle here, we have the brothers Talik and Waki Wynn. And over on the end, we got our brother Muhammad over here, brother Jay Moo over on the side over here. And uh, excited to bring you into this discussion today, which is a pretty hot topic in terms of masculinity and when it becomes toxic. Mm. Right. You know, a lot of people talking about toxic masculinity these days. Real brother. quick, let's, so, let's, let's look that up. Let's look up toxic look masculinity? Yes, sir. As far as masculinity and tox. Okay, James is looking up toxic. While, while he's talking about it, you know, it, it was really hot a few years ago um, in social media where people were talking about toxic masculinity and when is it too much in terms of what men expect and how we rear our sons. Like, from examples, like, uh, I remember when my, my sons played football, Oh. If they get hurt, the first thing we doing is get up. Yeah. Somebody might have a broken leg. We're we, we going to try to ask them to get up first, right? And I'm not saying all of that in terms of sometimes it's warranted, right? Because they're, they're being what we would call a little baby or being a little uh, sensitive. Or they're just in pain and we don't, we've been sensitized that you're not supposed to show uh how you feel about when you're receiving pain. You got anything over there yet, Jane? Real quick, with as far as toxic... Uh, there's you know a few different uh, definitions, but the one I guess that they're relating to this is extremely harsh, malicious, or harmful. Okay, and then of course masculinity, <clears throat> harmful. Okay, so when okay. we talked about go ahead. the quality or nature of the male sex, the quality, state, or degree of being masculine or manly. Okay, right, so. so Putting those two things you together. You better look up manly. I think, right. No, look, look, look. I think we going down a rabbit hole. My, yeah, my, right. My, my, uh, my, my recollection of when this became popular was in this social media boom. Number one, when we started, uh, a lot of the gender stuff came out, right, with people using pronouns and, and all of that stuff. And then in addition to that, a lot of females were speaking out about toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. Right. In terms of. uh, And so you say harmful masculine behavior. Do you all even think there's such a thing as toxic masculinity? Let's start there. That's why I had to question those definitions. No, I think there is. I think there is. Hold on real quick. Oh, all right. Well, before you expound, I pose this. Is it the same of something with a different title or name? You know what I mean? Say back in the day, was that chauvinism back in our generation or whatever, you know, or machismo or whatever you might want to call it. Chauvinism is <laughs> 20, toxic 30. masculinity. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So right. that, is, is that what it is now to, in today's you know society? That, that's what they call it now. The same thing, just I a different label or, be, or no? Or, I would think those or, or go ahead and expound be, that. I, I would think those, you know, being a chauvinist is probably... Yeah, toxic masculinity. It probably degrees is the new term. to toxic masculinity. Yeah, exactly. I think I think when when masculinity becomes toxic, it's when um it is in violation of a female. Um when you when you think here's toxic masculinity, and we all understand this. As a young 
17, 18, 19 year old man, we think masculinity is finding how many women we can sleep with. Right. That's toxic masculinity. Yeah, right, right. At right. its fullest. Right. Right. You know, that is that is toxic masculinity at its fullest. So okay. when when and and then, you know, so there are degrees of this. And so I think where where we struggle as as 50 year old men and probably just men in general is where is that line? You know, um, I don't know if you guys saw like, OK, I remember like in in the 70s, if you got an earring, you know, that hmm. was perceived to be a feminine, feminine right. a feminine thing. Especially and if you had two. You, yeah. Oh, if you had two, you was gone. Yeah. Basically, back then, if you had two, everybody said he gay. Yeah, right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And, and so and so 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 exactly. So, hey, what is it? The, the gay thing. You know, and now you know we're in into a new time, and and uh, and 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 to look negatively upon being gay is toxic masculinity now. You know, mm -hmm. because you know we in a society now where all of this is 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 uh, is changing in terms of how we look at it and how you know the the masses of people are accepting of LGBTQ community and all of that stuff. <clears throat> that is, that's where we start to figure out where, where are these lines at? Can I dig into that? You know? Because I, yeah. this is a good, this is a good starting point because. Uh, Hold up real quick before we get too far away. Cause I wanted to throw this in on the whole earring thing back in our day. It used to be the rules to that too. If you had side, one, right? it had to be on the uh, left side or something like that at first, if you had one. Right, and then if, and after that he evolved and said, okay, he could be on either side or whatever. And then, and then if it was two, yeah, it was something kind of like, oh, you know, but come on now, y'all getting <laughs> right. out of damn control. Yeah, you, yeah, you know, yeah trying to yeah. be like women then that because women wear two earrings because you were yeah. told it had to be and, on the. And left then side. it had to be like right. a little stud, a little dime. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't, so be, so couldn't, couldn't be no loop yeah. or hoop. Yeah. You was going too far. It was a loop. <laughs> Anything yeah. dangling? Yeah. Uh -uh, you know. But, and, so and why did you wear that? Why did you get that earring? To put to be cool. Try to be cool. To cool for what? For the women. Oh, okay, okay. Because <laughs> <'cause, 'cause laughs> that toxic masculinity we're okay. talking about. And so, <laughs> see how many we can see. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, I clarify what you just said, though, about getting a bunch of women, right? That you're saying that's toxic, right? Yeah. So, what about, what if we got a bunch of phone numbers, right? But we didn't do damage <laughs> to them. Was that toxic? Because <laughs> well, I think something innate that's, in that's, that's the beginning. That's the those, that's that's step that's one. The, that's yeah, the breeding yeah, ground. Yeah. Yeah, that's just step yeah, one. Yeah. That's the breeding. But, I don't but, think but that's, that's, is that, is that not something innate? Is but, that but, not but something? See, but when you, I'm but not that saying, is an example of you <laughs> and us when we competing as 12, 13 year olds trying to, trying to show our how many numbers you machismo got. Yeah. and how, how, yeah, how attractive yeah, yeah. we can be to young lady. That's, that's us competing. Now we're not taking it to the sex level because we in seventh grade. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but you know, by the time we 17, it's a different ball you're game. You're hoping all of them come through. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like so, it's like oh, I'm gonna get one guy. I got ten. Once I get one, I'm good. Right. That, that wasn't how it was going. Yeah. So so I think we all agree that 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 you know having the Will Chamberlain list of women don't make you a man, right? However, we agree with that now that we got some sense. Right, right. I'm not so sure a whole lot of people agree with that when we was. You thought Will Chamberlain? You was like, man, he balling in a whole nother way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, 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 right. So we agree that that's toxic. I was just, I guess, my question was, it's still something innately in us, right, that that wants to chase women. And what's wrong? With but is it innately justify... in us? Is it innately in us to chase all of them? Or one? See, but the thing I found that, that his his whole herd. views <laughs> are toxic. <laughs> Masculinity doesn't match time, what, you you know, what like many women are, are are defining it as, though. You know what I'm saying? That's, Yours that's is true. a reasonable that's... sense, and and probably the the more accurate of if you're going to use those terms, that's that is defined. You know, but that's an easy one for men to accept. But yeah, right. No, I was saying that his his what he looks at as toxic masculinity does not match what how women seem to use it. You know, just Loosely to describe just uh, ma I give you an example of what you're or, saying. Though. Okay, please, yeah. I give you an example of what you're saying because you said male chauvinism, right? There are women that say it's toxic. I'm telling you how they use it. It's toxic masculinity because you're chivalrous. Right. I don't that's, know that's why the, I'm not doing. See, that's the devolvement of it. Right. Because I'm down with the hey, that's toxic. 
if you just assume and like, oh, don't assume I can't take out the garbage either. That's t- See, they calling stuff that was chivalrous, historically chivalrous in respect. In some cases, people are calling that toxic masculinity. Now. But that's I what think, I think that has to do with feminine, on a feminist uh, yeah, the perspective. Femi- right, right. Many, well, yeah. oh, I'm strong enough to get my own door. And all, yes. I want to yeah. read this quick. This, this is another <laughs> yeah. definition of masculinity, right? Set of attributes, behaviors, and roles associated with men and boys. Masculinity can be theoretically understood as socially constructed. And there's also evidence that some behaviors considered masculine are influenced by both cultural factors and biological factors. Right. I don't see how socially and culturally are different, but based on the definition, that's right. social constructs and culture is like, that's what culture is. Right, like social right. constructs. And I guess that's where the biological come in, right? So if, if that's in us to chase as a young man, right? How do you? He won't tem- let it go. How do you know? How do you temper that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he said. This because I believe said. we have a, we have a generation of emasculated young men. Uh, okay, you, you well, understand? Uh, but hold on. Uh, look, this is what he said at first. He said a lion chases the whole herd when he was justifying it, right? Uh-huh. But actually, lions chase the whole herd, but they find that one little slow gazelle, <laughs> and they hone in on that one, <laughs> and they get the one and take them up in the tree, and then they good. Right, they don't right. take all the gazelles in the tree, bro. <laughs> Until it's time to eat again. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. But I mean, yeah. I you, mean, you, store, so, you storing up like a bear? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, like, he like, like you're going to have enough. <laughs> you go about a spring time, he's got 900 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a squirrel. No, so, so, so obviously, yes. when, you know, when we talk about, again, when you're young and you're chasing ladies, right? Yeah. But, but again, our ladies don't want us to lose that. You understand? You want to. We can have that within a monogamous relationship. They don't want you to lose that. All right, explain. Go, go, go they, on they, a they, level. You got to have that ability right. to hunt. Yeah. Yeah. And if you lose it, they could be turned off by you as well. Let me ask you this, what, John. We yeah. got deer problems in Maryland, right? Uh-huh. And, 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 and they're trying to control the deer population. Right? So they're bringing some wolves. But they, did, they got this one season where they say, all right, everybody can shoot all the deer. Other than that, they got rules. Right, we're right. not. Uh, we're agreeing with you that hunting is appropriate. We're telling you you can't hunt everything. That's that's what we're no, saying. No, I agree. That's what the yeah, toxic yeah, yeah, part yeah. is. Right, exactly. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. That's toxic. So we we again. Now that I guess it's toxic because I'm using hunting as an analogy. <laughs> some will argue that. Oh yeah, right. we might. Yeah, you might get some comments on. It. <laughs> Look, this is what I want to go back to because we demonstrated. Said he right said now. now is toxic. I think I, I don't want to misquote you, but you said. Something about how people interact with gay people. I don't, you, I don't know if you said it's toxic not to like them or like. Yeah, it's it's toxic to have a, a negative perception all right, well, of, let me, of being that's gay. What I, that's what I, that's what. Yeah, that's me. what I said. Because look, so is it though the same thing? Like that negative perception, do you see this as a negative perception? For example, I don't support that as a behavior that I endorse, but I respect and honor gay people and treat them with respect and honor. So I, I, my perception of the lifestyle is something that I don't particularly subscribe to, but is it toxic because, because that's my position, but I still treat them as human, still recognize their rights under the constitution, don't discriminate, but I see the behavior as something that I don't condone. Yeah, so I is that I toxic just... masculinity? I, th- I think that community would think so. They Absolutely. would. They, they, yeah, they, I, but I that, think that's so. A, that's, I, I, that's, that's not fair, though. That's but, not even right. But I right. think they make the same parallels with, with, with race. You know, somebody might say, well, I prefer to date a black woman, but, you know, I don't subscribe. I respect if you want to date outside your race and all that stuff. It's the same argument it that, is. that 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 uh, people in the LGBTQ community would make. The one, so that the would one be like saying... The one difference is, and, and I get the nuance about what I'm about to say. Yeah, okay. The one difference is, in some cases, being gay is a choice, right? I'm saying in some cases, it's because a, some people okay. feel they're born that way, yeah, some yeah, of yeah. them don't. Uh huh. You don't have, race is not a choice. Right, and I can't stand right? when you they know what I'm saying? But I do recognize that they're gay for <laughs> I do recognize that there are gay people yeah. in the uh, the gay LGBT community that say, "Hey, I was born this way." Uh, yeah, but there are some people that acknowledge that I'm just choosing. Sure, this you know. So I think that's a nuance that, um, to me, 
at least it's not an but, apples but, to but, apples. Okay, but then the conversation I, is if they want to make that choice, it's their choice. It's it their is. Life. So is it not my choice to say I don't condone that? Yeah, that's, so, that's what so, I'm so, And that's what I'm saying. It's the same as black and white. You know, boy want to marry a white girl. They gonna see it the same I disagree. way. I disagree. I disagree. Not All right, same. go ahead. Explain. I, I think, it should be yeah. the same. You say it's the same. That's not no, the same. No, no. I'm no, saying he, he they, said one they more perceive view. it the same. So I'm saying the LGBTQ community will see at that as the same thing. Oh, and right. so, he said they will see. So, it so thing. as a result, they're gonna feel the same way about that. Oh, okay. that's, well, that's that's the same what I'm thing saying. As they say, you know, the the gay rights movement. Is the same as the civil rights movement. Man, Correct. I and a lot of folk like be like, no, you know. But but yeah, I just wanted to point that out because I. Know but that's a good point, though. Whether or not that's toxic, I think I think it's definitely toxic to mistreat them because you don't agree with that. But Correct. just like somebody that doesn't like chocolate ice cream, right? I can say I don't. I have a negative perception of chocolate ice cream, which I don't. Just saying. But you can't be mad at me if I say that's you like the taste and I don't. I, I think, but I yeah. treat the res, I respect the fact that you like ice cream. I think to sum it up, it right. would be said that you. I can't speak for anybody else, but some people say, I don't celebrate it. I tolerate it. They may see tolerance it is a word that causes problems with right. that situation. Right, <laughs> and, and, and using the race analogy, right? Um, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. You, yeah, <laughs> we lose eyes too. <laughs> they come back, does it say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, for sure. But, uh, so, so, um, so we're back at again. So we talked about that in relation to sexuality. What about? Um, did you have something you wanted to? No, I was. I was just going to talk about you know dealing with young boys. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go oh ahead. no, you know when when we have uh, <clears throat> young men and 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 the culture of uh, we we've been coaches. We played sports before. That culture in the locker room of of um, I believe a lot of that is a lot of toxic masculinity mm -hmm. because a lot of the language that we use around sports, we start to put that in our young people. You know, you act you playing like a girl, you acting like a girl, you solve like a woman, you know, and we using much more graphic language than that. Yeah, I, I was about to say, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The we, female dog one. Yeah, we yeah. we using way yeah, much yeah. more what graphic language than yeah, that. Yeah. And so for me as a young man that that played sports in high school, played in college, when you know how hard it was and has been to unwind all of that stuff that I have heard for years in, in locker rooms in terms of masculinity and, and what's required to be tough. You know, we, we wanna tell our sons to get up uh, or, or our young daughters to get up on the, on the field because we know in order to play at the highest level, you have to be able to play through pain. Right, right, you right, know? right. And so I'm trying to teach you how to play through pain, but at the same time- The language you're using. Exactly, the language I'm using around that starts to make you develop, you know, those chauvinistic attitudes, or I, I like to say them caveman attitudes when it comes to women. And so that's where we want to find the balance. You know, I always think about, like, we we 50 some years old, so um, we grow up 51, okay, 50, right. 50, 51. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in my 40s. Some could have been 58, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, think about for us, you know, we grew up in a time with Prince, Okay, Prince in his heyday, you know, <laughs> and he would wear blouses and all of that stuff. But I don't recall us feeling like, you know, Prince was less than a man, so to speak. Because um, his music was so good, bro. And, 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 and I God. think maybe because- Oh, please, and he was pulling some shorties. Oh, my God. That's, right. There you hey. go. See, that's the, that's the masculinity yeah. part I'm talking about. Like, because he had all these women that we saw him with, I mean, like, well, he can't. You know, he, he was pulling he, them. He's a man. And he was slapping them around, and the woman still loved him, right? <laughs> hey, man, this <laughs> story, the though, that's coming out that, like, suggesting, I, I'm not, that Prince was maybe bi or something like that, what they call bi now. But, but. but the point is, because we saw him with these women, we did not <laughs> have a negative perception of his sexuality. You were just so sort of like, oh, no, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Right, and, right. Yeah, we, we didn't, we, maybe, we right. Some, you know, some of the older may, you know, well, and it's similar cats. with Michael Older Jackson. Older cast is probably absent yeah. the accusations later on. I'm just saying. 
early on, we'd be like, is Michael, you know, but then Michael had females. Right. right. Well, not not I quite. Think, yeah, that wasn't done the same as Prince. Though Prince was sporting his. Oh yeah, Prince. Yeah. But, Mike but, was just, but Mike you know, ain't Mike never had. Prince just, was a player. But Mike was, ain't never had high heel shoes on. And a blouse. Yeah, he's in the black. And his butt cheeks out. But, but, yeah, Charlie Murphy dressed all this but, on the day she passed. Yeah. Charlie Murphy dressed all up. But uh, but to 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 Waukee point in the locker room, right? You know, um, you know, just hearing that stuff, um. You know, as a young young man, a boy, kid, or whatever, in the locker room, and they saying all this, but I'm not motivated to play anyway. You know, and so I don't care what they say. You know, at we first, attack your masculinity because you don't want to play. Correct. So in the beginning, it bothered me. You know, because all right, man, I go play. But then, but then after that, you know, the next thing you know, I'm like, you know what? I make my own daggone decisions, you know what right. I mean? And so, you know, um, just standing up for what you believe is right. Now, you know, uh, to set the record straight, everybody going to have their own opinions about you. But, I mean, at the same time, you know, you, you know what's good in your heart. What's you deep know? about the sports one is, first of all, I'm glad Waukee said locker room talk because that's how corporate America and mainstream America uh, dismisses Toxic man, oh, that was just locker room talk. Boys will be boys. <laughs> that's what Trump said. Yeah, yeah. Boys, locker room yeah, talk. that's what I'm saying. Boys will be boys. <laughs> but on the sports one, what was interesting about that is uh, you know, back to the uh back back, I done quoted Hove a couple times today. He said, All of blacks got is sports and entertainment, right? You know what I'm saying? So my but at, at that point, but my point about that is we attach masculinity to sports. And entertainment because we saw that as the predominant ways a man can go get it in this world. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. We attach so much to it. You can ball, you can get out the hood, you can get rich. We didn't attach it to the nerdy kid that was balling out in the classroom. We don't attach masculinity to those things. And I think that's a huge problem in our community. Like everything that we consider to be masculine. It's something where we're exerting our physical, physical prowess physical with, element. as opposed to our intellectual prowess. So we don't even see it. Even even sisters and some of our sisters who complain about toxic masculinity, you know, you ain't attractive as a man if you in corporate America. They want the thug. Right. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're even attaching toxic masculinity to a requirement for you being able to get with the baddest chicks. For a lot of young people, and that's another side of it. That's a that's a problem, mm. you know. Yeah. And so, um, so, so then, Joaquin, when we talk about, and everybody, when we talk about uh, some of the stigmas attached to masculinity, what is on the other side? What is appropriate masculinity? Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to talk about. Um, in terms of, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, and John can tell this story about, you know, when uh, one of your boys was was humping or something. You're like, nah, we do the humping. We don't. <laughs> you have to oh, remember, oh, you, okay. you remember yeah, the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell that. <laughs> but um, you, but don't, you don't shake your booty. Yeah, yeah, you don't shake your booty. Right. Exactly. Nah, so girls so, do that, though, you said? No, I, I said if I had a daughter, I wouldn't want her shaking her booty okay. like that. You know what I mean? So I don't want my son doing that. That's not. Yeah. That's yeah. Not so so I think, you know. Really teaching our sons, and what I tried to do, teach them how to be stand up young men. And so the masculinity that I focus on is knowing what your principles and what your values are and standing on that, no matter what other people say. So if you know, like, this is the behavior I engage in, this is how I act, this is how I conduct myself, that for me was truly masculinity. You know, as as I heard someone say, make sure as you move through this world, all your no's are no and all your yeses are yes. <laughs> and when you say yes, you mean yes. And when you say no, you mean no. So you and mean, stand mean on that. So for me, that was the masculinity I'm talking about. You know, when you can stand on whatever it is you're saying, that's the masculinity that that I'm looking for, you know, and, and being of of high character. You know, so for me, that's what it was all about. And that's what I try to make sure my sons had the ability to do. 
So you know, what's like, good? What's yeah. what's what's acceptable masculinity to stand on? To? Well, twerking ain't real quick because <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, but that that's what irks me about it because if we say something like that, or if I, you know, say no dude should be twerking, then that, I'm, that's, that's labeled toxic, that's that's toxic, label toxic yeah. mas masculinity. But I, I disagree with that. You know what I mean? Why do you disagree? Yeah, why a dude can't twerk? <laughs> because, like JG said, and what he told his son, that was toxic. That, that that seems that that seems to be what should be relegated to a female. No, he balanced. He brought a balance. He he saved himself. He said, <laughs> "He said I didn't. If I had a daughter, I don't want her twerking, and I don't want you twerking." Oh, okay. You go oh, yeah. with the straight up I, I, females. Yeah. Only was, one should be. He well, was in the room with some older boys, and I was like, "No, no, no, no. You not see, see the that, older boys was twerking." Nah, no. I know. I know one was twerking, but there was like saying, "Shake your booty, shake your booty, shake your booty." And he's not. Yeah. And, and uh, what, you, three, four. you can dance. Yeah, but see, when we talked about social or cultural. Right, norms versus biology and the definition of masculinity, right? But that was something being taught to him that I didn't want yeah. to be taught to him. And again, if I have a daughter that's three or four years old, to me it's completely inappropriate right. for her to be twerking. You can dance. It's okay to dance. Dancing is wonderful. But that's that's sexualizing the child. Twerking is dance. Twer it's sexual it is. dance. I was yeah. about to say suggestive, yeah. yeah, yeah. But for me, this okay. is what this is what it made me uh to look, I got you. I got you. Oh, you this do. is what made me I, I get it. I can't lose this point. When we said um when you talk about the impact of Waki was talking about, hey, your yo, your no, your no, your yeses, your yeses, right? And stand on some <clears> values. <throat> the point is the values that shape our children, our values aren't the only ones that impact and shape them. And that goes to your point about something being taught versus an innate behavior, right? right? And social construct because right now we got, let's just be honest, like say if you, if you choose not to be sexually suggestive, we have clothing designers though that design clothes that make you dress socially suggestive. That, right. that are available for you to buy and that they get marketed <clears throat> as being the end thing to do. You have, for example, if you have someone that chooses, uh, I'm just gonna say a drug abuser lifestyle, right? You could your children could get around them and be suggestive to them that that's okay, that that's normal, right? So those people would say, if you're anti-drug, you're toxic. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. You to me, we reserve the right to choose what we want to teach our children and to not let society and its social constructs carry more weight than the values that we want to teach them. And so when they brush up against that, people could say, hey, that's toxic. But in actuality, it's really just a difference of opinion and the values I try to espouse. So let's say if I believe that. It's a man and a woman. That's what a relationship is, right? right? Right, And it's not that I'm being toxic when somebody chooses otherwise, but those are the values that I believe how life should best be lived. And since I have a child and I'm molding my child, it's okay for me to say to them, this is what I think is socially acceptable without somebody labeling you as anti-anything, as long as to me, again, you're not disrespecting people's individual rights. See, it's a difference to me of saying I have a difference of opinion about your choice than saying I'm going to judge and mistreat you and castigate you over it. Of course, you know right. right. So, that yeah. that yeah. was the racial yeah. analogy I was going to use earlier, right? So if someone, and this may be controversial, son, if a white dude say I want my daughter to date white boys on, and that's what, or, or I'm sorry, if a white, white person say I, I prefer white women, right? Or vice versa. I prefer black. Women, this, that, the other. You can have your preferences. I don't think anybody has a problem with that. However, if someone a lot does, of people got a problem with that. They do. I don't think it's a problem if you have a preference. I think there's a problem if you have an exclusion or someone dates someone of the opposite race, and then you, I disown you. I'm not going to deal with you no more. And I, like you said, so I'm, I'm going to disrespect you. Yeah, I'm going to disrespect you. I'm going to ostracize you because I don't agree with that. There's a difference to me. You can have your preference. I think it's hey, everyone has a preference. You know what I'm saying? Right. Without it, without it, right. being, and without it being mislabeled or misinterpreted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, I, I even hate the whole homophobia term. And I think it was a comedian, my man, um, 
Is it Godfrey? Maybe. When we saw him, when we saw him in, in uh, I forget what. Yes. And he, I, I wish I could pull it up or, or see it, but he he kind of described that whole notion to be so inaccurate as well. And and, and, and when I find it, I'm gonna I'm gonna share that one. Because a phobia is a fear of something. Exactly. So people are saying, if you if and you don't like listen, it, you fear it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Or if you don't, if you don't embrace it, you, you it. Yeah. Talik. I just think, um, you know, people just uh, changing the terminology of 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 uh, of some of the meanings that that w once had this meaning and now got another meaning. You know, I mean, even some as far as hashtag, right? You know, my son and I, we we went back and forth forever. I was like, that's a pound sign, right? He was like, that's hashtag. I'm like, man, y'all always changing stuff. Yeah. So, so something as simple as that, right? You know, um, you know, the, the their generation is always changing things, you know. And and I'm not even saying that I'm, you know, hooked on back in the days, but at the same time, man, I just tell my son, look, this is how a young man, you know, should carry himself. Um, how? What, huh? How should he carry himself? Well, I'm about to say. I'm about to elaborate on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, like I remember when he was he was doing something when he was little, I say, Hey, little boys don't do that, you know. And and um and I was like, and then I, I can't remember exactly what it was, and he he was like, Huh? And then I started I said the reason is because and then I started explaining stuff to him and stuff, but at the same time, man, um, you know, I'm like, look, carry yourself as a gentleman. Be nice and be respectful to young ladies. You know, I teach them how to, you know, open doors and be polite and stuff like that. But, you know, if, I mean, people, somebody going to always disagree with you on her. That's not your responsibility. You know, you're not going to be liked by everybody, you know. Right. And so I'm just painting that same message. And you can use this in all walks of life, you know. If, 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 um. If that's not your thing, that's not your thing. But sometimes, man, I think people play on words, you know, to try to manipulate you into being able to feminize you. And that's what, I, you know, and I'm like, you know, and so when, when I see these things, I, I identify and let my son know you don't have to be rude and disrespectful, but be aware, you know, and understand what this is, what, what this is going to lead to or could lead to. And so that's what I do. Do you think um do you think that there is a we're in an era where what you call feminization of men is like people want that to be or do you think that's a, a, a something that's prevalent now that that is going on a I, lot? Like I mean that? definitely. Uh, I mean you see it all the time. Much I more mean, so than our generation. Yes. Yeah. I mean but you know they um they, 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 you know, that's the message that they want. to. That's the message that they, I believe that so many want to, um, to, to put out there. And I mean, you know, I mean, if that's, if that's, if, if my son wanted to be, you know, live a, a, a different life, alternative lifestyle, I'm going to support him. Mm -hmm. I might not support the behavior, but I'm not going to mistreat him. You know right, what I mean? Right. So if he said, well, dad, I, I, you know, I, I like men or whatever. Okay. You know, we're going to have a talk, but at the same time, if that's what he, but at the same time, like what age are you saying? this? Are you saying yeah. this at three? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and so sometimes it might be a learned behavior, right? You know, and plus, you know, some adults, you know, they see so much of it going on and they like, Oh, everybody doing that. Well, everybody doing a whole lot of things. Yeah. All yeah. depends on where you at. Everybody right. robbing people. Right. You know, it may not happen here, but it's happening in Atlanta. Do I want my son to rob? No. You know what I mean? Right. So you get to you, choose what you like as right, a human being. Right. So, I mean, if you have a problem with that, then that's that's on you. You know, you you got a problem with my son robbing you. If that you know what I'm saying, if we using that as an analogy, but then you don't have a problem, but you want to support him by being in his lifestyle, like you know. So I would think people would say that's a terrible analogy. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Which one? As far as what? I don't Compare, rally about man, alternative about. lifestyle with robbing people. I'm just now, saying, it, but, it, but but it, there's it, a difference. Yeah. Everything we saying is there's a difference, 
And that's all I'm saying. There, there's a difference. And so you want you want you want to lead this person to doing this. OK, well, you know, hey, hey, robbing people is some people thing. You know what I mean? And they're I get I, I understand where Talik is going in the sense that he's saying you want you're saying I should accept this thing that might not be acceptable to me. Well, why don't you accept this other thing that's not acceptable to other people? So that's, and, 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 I get, that's, and, I, and I know your point too right. is that well, robbery's a crime and you breaking the law. And you're right. hurting somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so yeah. But that's even if it's not robbery, just say it was something else yeah. that they might, you know, those people. It could have be things, anything. Those people have value systems that they do and do not support. Right. right. And so the converse could be true. So look, right. So that might was a bad about, one, but I appreciate you yeah. elaborate on but, yeah. but we, we've been talking a lot about it as it relates to sexuality, right? Right. That's a part of toxic masculinity, as it's called. The other part I'm thinking about is this. What about, because we talk about children a lot. And we did talk about the locker room talk, and, and you mentioned about um, this. But, but when, as parents, like, for example, I think it's toxic masculinity when, when we were, like, we were talking about on the episode we did about death. We were talking about everybody has their grieving process. Like everybody has the level of toughness they're gonna be, right? Mm -hmm. right? Everybody. I mentioned the whole thing about intellectual prowess versus physical prowess. To me, we're a toxic parent. If you got a child and you know he's a sensitive child, and you use the tough dad stuff with him all the time, that's toxic. Yes, because you're not investing in the best. What's best for him as an individual? So the difference between <coughs> equity Rush. and equality is this. You can't treat all children equal. That's why equity is better. Equality is everybody gets the same thing. Equity is everybody gets what they need to be successful as an individual. And I think it's toxic when we parent with an equality Mentality. What are y'all thoughts about that as opposed to equity when it comes to some of the masculine stuff? Because my son might need his mama to explain something other than me that's just gonna go straight in, right? About certain things. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think we all saw that um, with the with the Dwayne Wade and his <clears throat> son slash daughter. Uh, I'm not sure what her what what her identity is now. She said she. I mean, what she they is a she. Daughter. Man, he um, said he's a she. She be dancing around all that fool's mouth. I, that stuff irks me. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> yeah. if, if you're going to claim that, like, say, for instance, my girl, what's her name? Demi Lovato. Uh huh. Try, oh, uh, our them. And then they hold an interview, and, and instead of her saying, we do this, that, she kept saying, I do, or whatever. So be consistent with whatever you're trying to claim of identity. Bro, you seem it, like you got some energy. As, it, right. as it pertains <laughs> to pronouns and that sort of thing, man. Because, man, that, that stuff kind of irks me. And, and well, yeah. So my thing and the way I see it is like I said, he he calls himself a she. And back in the day we say he she or he she. Right. But anyway. So we, we trying to we trying to move past that, bro. <laughs> All right. So we're well, not I, saying well, he if, she. If, if 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 this, you know, causes you know, because hey, most of our episodes have been, hey, everybody's kumbaya. But it, this is gonna be the one that I I have to be the so, I'm gonna so be the one. Let me ask you this. So your point is one. but the energy came out when you said Dwayne Wade, you basically said it, you know, he... Because I think his son was 12 at the time, I think. Might have been younger 12 or 13, than that, bro. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think a little younger than that. And, and, and the thing is, it, you know, it's, it's one thing, like, he actually ended up support, like, promoting it, supporting it, and doing what he felt was, as a parent, the right thing to do was, was to help the transition. Yes. Um, to the point, like, I think the... Uh, I think his son is now modeling or something like that now and doing spreads, covers of magazines. And so there was a lot of flack behind it because it was like a, a lot of celebrities and stuff were saying that he was wrong for what he did. Man, I think this is so important. I don't, I think when dealing with these issues, they have to be a one on one basis. Because when you look at the suicide numbers, amongst people who deal with those types of issues, whether it be gender or whatever it is, that that is is so important that we give them the support that they need. Now we're moving into mental health 
mental health areas. Mm -hmm. But but I don't care what you say you are, boy, girl, trans, what I don't care. I want you to be a healthy person in this family. And that's what's most important. Whatever we need to do to make sure you are healthy mentally, that's what we're going to do. And if we need to uh, make some adjustments in our attitudes as a family, that's what we're going to do. Does that mean you so, would support paying for a sex change, for example? Who me? If that's what this person needs, absolutely. Hey, okay. I'm oh, supporting no. that. You know, I know I'm supporting that. Some people. No, yo, I mean that. Was, I really do mean that. At, 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 some people now, say, I'm not, but your I'm not point doing is, a sex change my, at 12. My, I know, but no, your point but is, I'm a support. Your point is, I don't want you to kill yourself. That's right. That's and, right. And, because, and, because any day on this earth is a good day. It's better than the than the um the alternative. So yes, you daggone right. I am totally supporting a sex change. Uh if if that's <laughs> what this young person feels like they need um to be who they are. they you know, as the term is their authentic selves. Do you well, consider uh, yourself to be a religious person? I I consider myself to be a very spiritual person. Okay. All right, but, let me but, just uh, say but that. But I'm so, I am uh not a religious person, right? No. Okay. No, no, no. So and that's fine, right? But and I'm yeah. not that's not but my, my point about that is though <clears throat> most people in society they default to that's not what God said. Yeah, no, that's I mean what, I, I'm just saying no, they do do that. No, I know that's what, ain't nothing kill more people on earth than religion. Yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing has killed more people on earth. Nothing caused more terrorism, nothing caused more slavery, all the stuff, all the all the negative stuff. In my opinion, religion, misguided religion. Let me say that. Nothing has contributed to the ills of this world more than misguided religion. What would you say about what would you say to someone that said to that point? Yes, but the reason why all of these behaviors are like this that I don't like is because the religion is misguided. Well, do you do you understand what I'm saying? What like, about, so what, what about the people that ain't your religion? Now what? What they supposed? To? Oh no, I'm just I'm just I'm just raising the point. Yeah, there. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's the point. Well, there's a lot of people that's not religious, spiritual at all. Yeah, what? right. Right. Now what? To me, it boils down to nature being or something natural. All right. That being, is nature. Being natural. Just like there's anomalies in nature all the time. I know. And, and, and it, just because it's not the majority, don't mean it's still not nature. Isn't it may not be the majority of how nature plays out, but but nature always produces outliers. It does, but 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 we don't we don't accept the outlier. We don't use the outlier to change the rule for everyone. We call which, them outliers. Which seems to be Actually, I mean you we do. Many times we change that we use the outlier how? to make the how? rules. It's it's if you think about just in society as a whole. Let's just use something like uh, a, a welfare system or a social net, a social safety net. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, all of the rules that are created are created because of the one or ten percent of the people that take advantage of the rules. Everything that we have is because of the two percent. We have all of these laws in society. Ninety-eight percent of people are law-abiding citizens. It's the two percent. The reason why we have to create all of these laws and rules for the two percent. Everybody else is following and doing what they should be doing. It's so all of the rules that we make are for the outliers. In I my think, opinion, I think you just made. I, I, I got to give you credit for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just made the only argument that even supports the overall point you make is the whole welfare dependency system and all that. But what what I would say to that is, uh, generally speaking, this is when I say that. Generally speaking, if you are a minority, you don't drive the bus in this world that we live in. You know, and, and somebody might decide to break you off a piece of the bus. And really, our social entitlement programs is a small drop of the bucket compared to corporate welfare. And so it's not just. Like there are rules also made for the other side. Yeah. So, but but my point is, I, I agree with you that no behavior exists in this world that isn't already a human being, right? Correct. And that there are, we know that there are genetic aberrations. We know that sometimes a dog gonna be born with three legs. Sometimes this and that. But that doesn't mean 
everybody else has to support three-legged dogs and the right. fact that we yeah. want more three-legged dogs. People might say, I like four-legged dogs. I like it this way. That's the way I believe life should be or the flow of the universe is. So my point is, again, I keep harping back to uh, the whole thing about respecting individuality without it having to change my perception of how life should be lived. Yes. You know what I mean? So, That's yeah. Yeah. So, me. so if we can all agree that Talik rocking the red shirt. Yeah. But so if Talik was like, nope. Yeah, well, you, well it, let it, me say this. The colorblind person don't agree to that. Okay. But, so okay, are we but gonna I see your point. Agree. Thank you. I was going there too, though. So are we all going to be like, okay, well, we all got to change and say that's purple to appease Talik. We still love Talik, but you got a red shirt. Now, to like you said, to the small percentage of truly colorblind, we can deal with that. But we still understand that there's a red shirt that he's wearing. You're not going to all say, well, it's red, but it's purple today. <laughs> you know, exactly. I mean, certain things are science, certain things are fact. But well, why do we, why, why do y'all think our conversation about toxic masculinity, I try to take us away from yeah, it being right about gay and, and all of that. Why yeah. do you think we continue to fall back to attaching well, that's it only what we to think gay men are. Say it again? Because that's what we think men are. That's what we think men are. Well, and it's, you know, what you mean? That's what we think men are. I also don't like the way they hijack the word gay because gay means happy. It's, it's really in the name. Yeah. I say I don't like the way they hijack the word gay because gay means happy. Nat King right. Cole, <laughs> Nat King Cole put on some great songs. I wish. See, no, I, 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 I think it's all talked about gay because places. it's in the headlines constantly. Yes. Somewhat may places. But right. really, well, but, I but think for people, me, when personally. people talk about toxic masculinity, though, your attitudes and opinions about gay whether to be or not to be is a small piece of that discussion. It yeah, really, it really is more so about the attitudes that men have hey. towards women. Correct. That, bro, that's why I think the toxic masculinity is a big part of why we see in the violence in the streets that we see. Because these young people don't know what it is to be able to be masculine and have this man step on his foot. This is what we need to get push into. Push him, bump right, him, right. This do is what whatever. We need to get into. Right. right. And and now all of a sudden, because I don't, because I feel like my manhood is threatened, I reach in my waistband and pull out a gun. Because I feel like Toxic I don't even know how to be a man, I'm even carrying Toxic a gun. Toxic masculinity. You know, because I don't know how to advocate for myself and speak for myself, I feel like I need a gun to make me a man. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. this is what we really talk this is what about men do because it. because this is what is young boys are not learning how to stand up, advocate for themselves, speak for themselves and speak from a place of empowerment. There so as go. a result, I'm not significant. So if I'm not significant, I'm going to get a gun because immediately when I pull out a gun and put it to your head. I'm the most significant person in your world. That's toxic masculinity. That's right. So we this have men, to. This is how real men handle their problems. And that's what's costing our young people their lives right, in the street. Right, right. From, yeah. from, 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 whether it be violence in the street, whether it be having children and you not married to the mothers, whether all of this, you know, teenage pregnancy, all of this is, is I believe, is the, the seed. Of 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 that this masculinity being a seed, and then it produces, you know, when it's when it's wrong. So you know? I think we can all agree, we we want our young men and ladies to to be tough. I don't think that's toxic to say that, right? We want to be mentally and physically tough. And going back to your point about equity versus equal, I'm a, you know using the big coaching analogy, right? Everybody right. know Bob Knight. The old Indiana basketball coach, right? He treated everybody the same. He screamed at all of them, right? <laughs> and it may work a little bit. You can you can lead through fear, right? Motivate through fear. But a great coach, like you said, is equitable. I know this pushes Corey's button. I know this motivates me. I know this motivates him. So as a parent, if I see my son and he fall down, I may, hey, you know, sometimes mothers scream. Ah, you know, sometimes some do, some don't. Everyone does it. But right. I want to lift him up, dust his knee off. And, and I want him like, oh, that's pretty good. You're tough. I'm teaching him how to get off and shake it off. But I guess if I scream at him, be like, get your little ass up. You know, it's the language you toxic. use around it. It's right. the language. Right. The language is everything. The so, language so, is the difference between 
it, being teaching, toxic and being a good teacher. Exactly. Right. The language we use. So, if you say, get up, stop acting like a girl, that's toxic. Yeah. If you say, hey, you, 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 you're a strong young man. I think you can handle the pain right now. I'm giving you them know? calm. Hey, good, I, calm saw, I saw a real, right? Energy. I saw a real. This is a great example of what both of y'all are talking about. And I, I've really, really, that is so dope what you said. The language. Right. It's all about the language. Yeah. Because it's not about your intent to make them persevere to be strong enough to deal with what men now. Men do have to do certain things based on what's inside. You got to protect your family. Yes. You, you got to be a warrior. You know what I'm saying? This dude was, uh, he had his little son in the batting cage, right? And uh, and he was pitching to him, right? And the son was about eight years old. And it was a black father and a black son. Could be any color. didn't matter. And uh, the boy, you know, sometimes you hit a baseball, the ball hit his hand or something, and it stung him. Oh, hurt. yeah, Did you yeah, see yeah. Uh-uh, I ain't seen and, it. Uh, and he, it hurt him, and he's like, ah! And he started crying. Uh-huh. The dad didn't say nothing. He said, get back in there. And he do it again. He kept pitching. Boy hit one. Didn't hurt his hand. Kept pitching again. Hit one and hurt his hand. He hit like five in a row and didn't hurt. He said, man, you see all that? Then he said, he ain't say nothing. About the fifth time, then he said, You know, like crying you was doing, don't nobody care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, don't nobody care. So, just that was the whole lesson, right? He didn't ridicule him, he just said, Nobody cares, get back in there and do it again, right? So, that's so his way got to the same end as stop being a little bee and stop being a punk and stop all that crying, that 65 stuff, and get in there, and hit the damn ball, right. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. So that's the shift I do. That that was a powerful. Act. Yeah, it's the, it's the language that you use yeah. around it, you know, yeah, and that yeah. and that is the determining factor, whether it's the lesson is being taught in a proper way, or or, or it's, it's it's a misguided lesson. Right. And right. so that's that's so that's what this conversation is about: is us bringing awareness to parents and the adults who are trying to teach these lessons to young people <clears throat> is that be extremely mindful of your language. Man, in my 50 years, the one thing I have taken out of this life is that I have come to lear learn and understand is that a single sentence from an adult can alter a young person's life for good or for bad. Let me, let me, let, 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 I got a, we got a quote after that. We can, we can frame this. This copy, copyright, beat you up good. A single sentence can lead to a life sentence. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And That's not just exactly jail, right. Sending right, right, you to right. frustration or yeah. whatever. Or That's a good. lifetime of baggage. Yeah, you yeah, start to yeah, feel yeah. a certain way about yourself. Yeah, Somebody yeah. say something about your lips, and the next thing you know, you 18 years old, get your lips augmented. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and you carrying this these this baggage you got with girl you. Lips. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever it may be. And so uh, young. Parents and adults need to be extremely mindful of the language that they use with young people because it can be life altering. And when you think about the power of that, we should all shudder at anything we've ever said to young people because you never know whether you've spoken life into a young person or whether you've spoken death into a young or person. Or whether you've been toxic. Or whether you've Even been toxic. I gotta, we got about eight minutes now. I want to flip this real quick. Right? Uh -oh. and, and, and say this and, and ask about this. And we can go out on our thoughts on this one. We've been talking about dads, right? What advice do we have to single mothers who are trying to give their children what the absent dad or father? should be giving them in terms of a masculine model, but balancing it with the nurturing and tenderness and understanding that mothers naturally provide, how do we help them navigate that delicate balance? Because sometimes they overreach on the masculine stuff when there might be a time when the father might be like, I wouldn't have went in that hard on him right now. Yeah, that's true. He won't that's true. Man enough. Right, right. Find, uh, find a good man. No. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even because try to I, do yeah, it. Yeah, because I don't think that's, it, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's very difficult 
for for a woman to do that, to be able to manage that. Yeah. Because that's what that that's what I believe is innately in them. And of course, men and, and that kind of touches on I, I believe the avoidance of toxic masculinity is for men to tap into that caring nurture because we can be nurturers and, and, and you know care for our children as well. And as long as we balance that out and they see that uh when it's when it's called for, I think you avoid the whole toxic masculinity. But mm -hmm. before again, because I know we're running out of time, I wanted to pose this with regards to since we're talking about language or whatever the case, all right, what kind of language would you use or how would you uh, if if your son came to you rocking like nail polish, like you know you see some celebrities or somebody do, and and though they you know they don't they they they're not necessarily being effeminate, you know or or, or, or uh, attaching that with it, you know to me that's just that's not masculine. So if if a, a young father or somebody's dealing with something like that now, or even um. I don't know how a woman would would deal with that if, they, if that's what they're trying to deal with, but how would that one young father deal with their son, teenage son or something like that, rocking uh, nail polish and and that's and that's being the cool thing right now. So the first thing, like the first thing I would say before I even spoke on that is I will understand that there's some men that don't think it's very masculine to have a, a manicure, okay? I was and, I, and, and just have your nails taken care of and, and, and polished. Back in the day, I was thinking that because while we were talking earlier, I was looking that up. I was like, okay, so I was in and, and I try to find things from our generation right. or what have you versus now. And I was like, okay, so in what I, back in the day, that would have been considered uh, a, a man who did that a metrosexual. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, and, so, so, hold on. Let me let oh, me share the right. definition of that real quick. <laughs> that <laughs> definition of metrosexual. Yes, yeah, they do. They move on a rubble. Yeah. So, so I'm 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 mindful of that. You know, it's once again, it's it's the greens of it. But go quick. ahead, go ahead, shoot, shoot off. A go usually ahead. urban heterosexual male, uh huh, given to enhancing his personal appearance uh -huh. by fastidious grooming, beauty treatments such as manicures yes, yes. and whatnot. And fashionable clothes as a metro. So, but to compare that to, you know, like a rocker or somebody, a musician, or, you know, whatever the case. Right. You know, just, I think for just, um, just for, you know, uh, I guess appearance to be kind of, there or stand out or be different in whatever way. All right. So go ahead with what, what you No, I, I, I was just, I was just going to say that, like, um, I would have a comment before I pass any judgment about why his fingernails were polished. I would ask him about it first. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's, that's the best approach. Ask yeah. the question. What's, really. what's the origins of this? Where you get this from? Who have you seen do this? All right. Because the first thing I'm going to know is that I am not going to make this about the nail polish. I'm not going to make it about the nail polish because I want to find out who he's being influenced by. All right. Because you're being influenced by someone right. when you see this. Right. So here are the people who in my house that I hope are influencing you because we got we got we got the we got the posters up, we got the pictures up of them. All right. So if these folks not influencing you, who is it? And and if you're choosing to be influenced by this other person, why are you following their example? So now it's about. It's not about the nail polish at all for me. And I won't make it about the nail polish at all. I'm going to make it about who are you using and who are you following as examples and who are you being influenced by? And we would, we don't even have to have a conversation, but I'm going to, the nail polish sparked my idea that I need to have this conversation with him, but it's not about the nail polish at all. It's about who are you allowing to influence you? And, and that's what I don't even have to respond early. to your question because I would have said exactly the same thing what you said. Yeah, but that's okay. what I'm saying. Who's yeah. influencing you now in society? Like there's propaganda going All right, on. So why see, does this point person is, we don't follow anybody. We lead us. Yeah. Right, so right, if right, you right. if you follow, if you if you a follower, then something is going on with your esteem. Because Correct. we we not we set trends. That's that's they, we right, on right. boss time. That, that's, that's how you, that's, that's, that's right. how you would handle or deal with. We on so boss time. I agree with you, but yeah. some people would say that's toxic. What do you say to those folks? You entitled to your opinion? Yeah, right. I, 
Hey, look, every time somebody say something, don't always re right, re right. require a response. You got, I got to be confident with them. Yeah. That's how people get, you know, way past, you know, that whole mission because they keep being in bondage <laughs> to what people think. Hey, hey, you know what I love? I, I got this from prime time. Don't let my confidence offend you. I'm well, sorry if my confidence offends you. But yeah. that's, that's a you issue. That's I, I want to go back to what course. No. Yeah, I was going to um, answer um, Corey's question about young single mother. Yeah, yeah. that's what I want to I, I was just going to make the point was that is the moment when you really need to reach out to your village. Mm -hmm. That's the yes. moment when you need to reach out to your village. And mm -hmm. it don't have to be a stepfather or a husband or whoever, a uncle, a coach, a teacher or whoever. And, and thus, when you start to bring those other people and ask them to be a little closer maybe to your son yeah. and, and, and ask them to have some conversations with your son. Um, you know, I, I said in another podcast, uh, we, was, we was just talking about, you know, being, being husbands and, and, and wives. And, and when I was talking to my mom about being, being a man, you know, and, and her quote to me was, I can't teach you how to be a man, but I can teach you how to be a man that a yeah, woman would want. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing nice, nice. when it, when it comes to, you know, to how do I um, teach these lessons? Well, you know what? I can teach you how to be a man that a young lady would want. Um, so, so start from that premise, but then go get, reach out to your village and have those people uh, pour, pour into your son. See, so my answer wasn't too crazy. I said, find a good man. So whether that man is like, <laughs> right, 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 right. Say, yeah. uh, uh, your right. brother or, uh, right, exactly. or uh, find a, a mentor. Right. Or and whatever, I, and I think man. it's a difference, though, between the uh, metrosexuality you talked about and painting your finger nails. Like mm. the self-care part is different than, than somebody painting their nails. I don't need attention. To get attention. In, yeah, in yeah, yeah. Opinion, I think that's a difference. But, so, yeah. uh, it's the B2M code, yeah. John. You got some feedback? Yeah, one more thing, too. Uh, going back to your question, too, as far as advice for the moms. All you can do is be the best mother you can be. Don't try to be something that you can't be. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if God forbid something happened to my, the children, my moms, I can't talk. My children's mom, I can never be their mother. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. All I can do is be the best father that I can be. Right. And, and, and I, I can't be seven feet tall. Right. I'm my height. I, I'm, I, I can be the best. So just be the best mother. Don't try to be the father. And and you don't have to do that. Right. But like you say, use the village and, and just protect your son, protect your daughter as best as you as best as you can. Be careful about uh, who you surround them with. It's the B2M crew. We just wrapped up an episode on uh, toxic masculinity. We covered a lot of ground. Had some controversial exchanges. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to know, and this is real talk, that uh, I don't think anyone up here disrespects, mistreats uh, anybody that chooses sexuality or anything else. Nice. We're just chopping it up on our own opinion about some of these uh, deep life questions. And we'd love to engage you about it. Maybe you can educate us. You can reach out, out to us at b2mcrew5 at gmail.com. You can also follow us on our social media uh, pages comment on this episode but uh hopefully we brought to you some uh shared some authentic thought interaction and engagement around this topic again we're here at the code building in charlottesville wrapping up another episode why you take us out of here man in the words of the great frederick Douglass, it is easier to raise strong children than to repair broken men peace peace All right. And I won't stop until I'm winning, 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 winning. winning. I'ma show them how true and independent get it. Whole game changed by the time I finish with it. We about to get this business handled in a minute. And I won't stop until I'm winning, 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 winning. They don't want me in the office because I.